Let's take a few minutes to look at sampling distributions and the central limit theorem. Suppose that we have a population of students and their ages distribute themselves in some fashion. It doesn't have to be a normal distribution, but just some sort of distribution. That population will have an, a mean, and let's say in this case it's about 19.1 years, and it will have a standard deviation, and let's suppose that's about 2.3 years. Now, typically in statistics, what we do is we take samples from populations. So we may grab, say, five people from this population, which makes our sample size five, and we would collect these five people, and then we would calculate for these five people a sample mean, typically denoted as X bar, and let's suppose these folks are a little bit older than the population's average. Let's suppose that, that the sample mean here was about 20.4 years. And they will have a standard deviation. And let's suppose that standard deviation is about three years. All right. A sampling distribution occurs if we were to repeat these samples of size five and record all the averages. So if we were to take this 20.4 and we were to record it on a horizontal axis for ages, all the average ages. If we were to repeat this process over and over again, we might get in our next sample an average that's a little lower than 20.4, and maybe the next time one that's a little bit higher than 20.4. And if we do this over and over again, we might get some low averages, we might get some high averages, but most of the time we'd get averages that concentrate themselves around some centering value. And these sample means, if we were to do them over and over and over again, would distribute themselves normally in the long run. And that's an amazing insight in statistics, and it can be proven, although we won't do that here. But I want to share with you a couple of insights about um, this distribution. First of all, not only is it normal, but the center, the mean of this sampling distribution will be 19.1 years. It will exactly match the population's mean. And the standard deviation for all these sample means will be uh, 2.3 divided by the square root of 5. Again, using the population's information and also, in this case, the sample size. So that number will be something smaller than 2.3. It may be around one, for example. All right, now, often in statistics, we want to take larger samples than samples of size five. And if, for example, we were to change our sample size from five to, say, 90, what would happen? Well, the sampling distribution would still be centered at 19.1, but the standard deviation would shrink by a lot. It now would be 2.3 divided by the square root of 90. And what that means visually is that our sampling distribution would be much tighter. It will still be centered at the same spot, but it will be much tighter. In other words, most of our samples will be right around 19.1 years. And that's a pretty powerful insight. And you feel that play out when you read about statistical studies. If you read about a, a new um, research on a drug that's been tried with thousands of people, you'll be much more confident with the results than if that drug had been tested by on only about, say, 10 or 20 people. On the next slide, we'll look at what happens with proportions as opposed to means from populations and sampling distributions. Let's now look at proportions. Suppose that in a population we have Democrats and we have Republicans. And let's suppose that 62% are Democrats, so our proportion of Democrats is 0.62, and then that makes the Republicans 0.38. And I'm using the letters P and Q. They typically denote um, proportions in a population. Now, suppose that we were to conduct a survey and collect a sample of 10 people. So our sample size is 10. So we would get these 10 people, and we would calculate from these 10 people the proportion that are Democrat and the proportion that are Republican. And suppose we find out that in this particular case, our sample P, which is called P hat, is 0.7, so 7 of the 10 were Democrats. Then Q hat would be 
Now, if we were to repeatedly do this sampling of size 10 over and over again, we could create a sampling distribution. And it would look something like this. First of all, we'll plot our 0.7 from our first sample. But if we were to conduct another sample, we might get 0.6 as our p hat. And then we might get 0.8 as our p hat another time. We might get a few more 0.7s or a few more 0.6s. We might get a 0.5. But if we do this long enough, we're going to get a whole variety of p-hats, and they are going to distribute themselves normally. That's what the central limit theorem tells us. And the center of all these p-hats, in other words, the mean of all these different p-hats, will be 0.62, the same as the population's p. And the standard deviation, in other words, the spread of all these p-hats, will be a calculation involving P, which is 0.62, Q, which is 0.38, and 10, which is the sample size that we were working with. Now, if we were to dramatically increase this sample size, suppose that instead of surveying just 10 people, we survey, say, 900 people, then everything about this discussion would still be the same, except at the very end our standard deviation would have a 900 in the denominator rather than a 10. And that would create a much tighter distribution. It would look something like this. So most of our samples would all concentrate right around 0.62. And that's why people like to sample large sample sizes. When you hear about polls are conducted, you hear that they're conducted on thousands of people as opposed to on just, say, tens of people. Because we're much more confident with a large sample that we are closely approximating the true population proportion. The last thing I want to comment on are, is a little bit of notation. Um, first of all, when we work with means or averages in, a, in statistics, we typically call the population's average mu and the population standard deviation sigma. We use those Greek symbols. And then if we deal with a sample, that sample's mean is X bar, and then its standard deviation is typically labeled just SD, or maybe SD sub X. And then we just found that the sampling distribution will be normal, and it will be centered at the population's center, or the population's mean, and then the distribution's standard deviation will be the population standard deviation over the square root of N, the sample size. And then for proportions, a population's proportion is typically labeled P or Q. And then the sample is labeled P hat or Q hat. And then we saw that those P hats distribute themselves normally. And they'll be centered at P. And the standard deviation or the spread will be the square root of PQ over N.